After the frantic action of VVVVVV, I was ready to slow things down with the puzzle game. Did Squareland hit the spot or miss the mark? You'll have to stay tuned to find out. I'm Josh, and this is what's happening. Squareland is a fairly straightforward, physics-based puzzle game. The goal of each level is to escort the game's main character, Blue, through a series of precarious platforms and dangerous enemies, all while collecting three stars along the way. You do so by breaking the various blocks that obstruct Blue's path and letting gravity and physics do the rest. The game has a wide variety of enemies, obstacles, and block types that all interact in different ways. Blue also adds to the puzzles by carrying a high amount of momentum and even occasionally moving from side to side, seemingly of his own volition. Timing even starts to play a major role in later stages, with the player needing fast reflexes in order to get objects out of Blue's way before he crashes into them and loses his velocity. Moving platforms will further test your speed, and they become increasingly common as the game progresses. Squareland's obsession with speed is an interesting and deliberate design choice, encapsulated by the player's inability to scroll through stages. And that's where things started to fall apart for me. The first few stages of Square Land seemed to be all about planning ahead. You break a couple of blocks, see how Blue reacts, and then demolish the rest of the stage before finally letting him do his thing. Not being able to scroll changes all of that. Instead of watching your carefully crafted machinations play out, the game devolves into frantic tapping. This wouldn't be so bad, in fact many games utilize a similar mechanic, but Squareland doesn't seem built for it. It becomes hard to see past your fingers to what lies ahead, and that makes you have to needlessly replay stages just to learn them. That wouldn't even be so bad if you weren't also fighting blue the entire time. Blue's movement is instrumental to completing the game's puzzles, but there seems to be no rhyme nor reason to the way he moves. Put him in the exact same situation ten times, and he will react in four or five different ways. And that's the game's core mechanic. This is a puzzle game based entirely around an unknowable quantity. It makes Square Land more of a guessing game than anything else, and that in turn makes the experience extremely frustrating. It's a shame, too, because this game is extremely well polished. It has a fantastic soundtrack, a great art style, and well-designed levels, but the actual gameplay is severely lacking. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Squareland might not have been quite as great as I was hoping it would be, but I already know what my next review will be, so be sure to check in next next Thursday every other Thursday we do this show and I will bring another review to you subscribe if you haven't so you're sure not to miss one and also check out some of the fun let's plays that we're doing on this channel as well we're checking out a lot of cool steam games some stuff that was released on the 3ds Wii U we've got shovel knight going on right now thousand and one spikes uh, Vita game as well on there so it's a lot of fun on this channel. Be sure to check that stuff out. Subscribe if you haven't, like I said. But even if you don't, thanks again for watching this episode. And I will see you guys all again on the next Thursday that we meet.